for seven. Handles the kickoff duties for the midshipmen. And we are underway. Presley fields it one yard deep in the end zone. And it's Bruce Presley across the 25, down to the 30, driven out at the 38-yard line. Matt Tate, the kicker, was able to make the stop and drive Presley out, but Rutgers will now inherit the ball with good field position on the 34-yard line. Quarterback for the Scarlet Knights, junior Brian Forte from East Brunswick. Good shipment. They've played, in essence, two different defensive schemes in their first two games. They were very aggressive against Virginia. Played some zone and some soft coverage against Boston College. We'll see what they have in store for Forte on first and ten. There's Brantley. Brantley had a notion to throw, pulls it down, and gets out to the 39-yard line. So Rutgers opens with the gimmick. Reverse to Chris Brantley. Here's the offense for the Scarlet Knights. Travis Broadbent is at center. Doug Kavulich has been outstanding on the offensive line. The running backs, TK Dorsey and Craig Mitter for 33. Chris Stoll is the tight end, and the receivers are Jim Garantano and Chris Brantley. Rutgers with a gain of six on first down. Here's the one back set that Mike Mayock was talking about. Forte trying to throw the quick pass and throws it away. Jim Garantano was well covered. Down around the flag stick for the first down, Bob. As you look at the Navy defense, look for Pearson to come in with a lot of pressure. Kaberski's the leader on the defensive line. Outstanding tackle, active up front, and he will uh, put a lot of pressure on the Rutgers defense offense. Zuluaga, very active linebacker inside with Chris Beck, the veteran, and of course in the secondary, Chatlos, the anchor back, who can be found a lot of places. Look for his name to be called off. Flag flies. Seven seconds left on the 25-second clock. We'll see what referee Body Ward has to say. Dead ball, illegal procedure, false start on the offense. So the Scarlet Knights their head coach Doug Graver they had a third and four now they'll have third and nine talking about penalties the one negative that Doug Graver talked about at his press conference this week where it's tough to take these penalties it's unbelievable those kind of penalties in the first two games of the season they started off here early with a big one they were penalized 34 times for 278 yards in the first three games as Forte drops back the pass complete to Mitter and Mitter Fights his way close to a first down. We'll wait for the measurement. Chris Beck, standing linebacker, a senior from Palatine, Illinois, able to make the stop. And the pass, excuse me, Bob, will move the chain. Good job that time as he dropped back in the pocket. He knew he wanted to get the first down. He went to the outlet. Mitter, Mitter coming out of the back. All the Rutgers backs, Mitter, Presley, Bailey when used, Dorsey, Moore, they can all catch the ball. They utilize it very well in this one back set. Here's George Trump, 56 years old. Williamsburg University, a 1958 graduate. Mitter finding the running tough. Does not get back to the line of scrimmage, and it's Andy Person, number 57, the left defensive end that comes up to make the play. And you realize early what Navy's trying to do. They're trying to put pressure on the corner with their defensive ends. That time, Dave Shaw from the right defensive end position. You're going to see number 62 get penetration upfield. The block is missed by Dorsey. That permits him to force the back inside. The pursuit gets to him and keeps him to uh, gives him a loss. Good play by the Navy defense. Pressure. Pressure right away on first down. Loss of one, second 11. Forte to Bitter. Bitter. Gets across the line of scrimmage, picks up a couple again. It's Andy Person. And Bob, uh, George Chop has had a, a couple of very good recruiting years. Uh, Person, a freshman, he feels very good about his freshman and sophomore classes. That's what he's building this program on. And watch 57 from Havertown, Pennsylvania. Last week he had two sacks against BC. He comes back, comes off the floor to get, make the hit and keep it to a short gain. And Doug and uh, Brian Forte is looking at third and long. Brantley split to the left, Garantano to the right. That's Greg Bitter in motion. Forte on the straight drop, looking downfield, intercepted! 
Davey, who had five interceptions so far, and here's Joe Speed down the left sideline, steps out of bounds at the Navy 45-yard line. The sixth interception of this young season for that midshipman defense. You bet, and that time it looks like it may have been confusion between the quarterback, Forte, and the receiver. One doing the other, and he threw the ball a little longer than the receiver anticipated, and, he, and the defender was right there to make a big play, and that's very important for Navy at this juncture. Here's the replay as we see it. Motion by Mitter. It's going to be drop back action by Forte as he sets up here, and he's looking deep. As he gets the protection, he launches the football, and it's just too far, but the receiver, meantime, had cut up short. That's number 18, Guarantano, and Navy has the turnover. And it's Van Meter at quarterback. Quickly throws an out pass, almost picked off by Robert Sneathan, number 89. Got a hand on the ball. It was intended for Pritchard in the left flat. We talked about Van Meter and the fact that we might see him early. That young man, only a junior, has played a lot of football for the Naval Academy. He's lined up at quarterback right now. He can run the option. He can throw off a play action. And he's also a fine receiver when they put him at the halfback position. Van Meter has averaged almost four yards a carry from his tailback spot this year. It's Van Meter running the option, turns it upfield, and the Rutgers defense did well to string it out. Doug Atkins was there, so was 55, Todd Lane. Here's the Navy offense. Steve Palmer is the center. Sokol, Hubbard, Pigeon, and Lane. Jason Van Meter at quarterback with Clavon Smith, the fullback. Billy James, the leading rusher at tailback. The tight end is a jersey product from Cherry Hill, Kevin Hickman. Tom Pritchard and Jimmy Screen are very capable receivers. Third and eight. Third and eight. Van Meter. Keen a 24-3 victory over Army last season. Drops back. Complete. It's the tight end. Should be Tom Pritchard, number 89, and Pritchard hauls it down across the middle and gets out for the first down. Maybe that time gave Rutgers their version of the single back offense with Van Meter at quarterback. He's going to half sprint just to get a little bit out of the pocket here so he can set up behind the protection of his fullback Smith. And he waits for Pritchard to come underneath from the wide out position. He catches the ball, a possession pass, just what they wanted. and gets enough for the first down before Atkins makes the hit. First down for the midshipman from the Rutgers 45 yard line. Green in motion. The handoff inside, that's Billy James, the junior from Chinchilla, Pennsylvania. Rutgers defensively has been led by Beckett, Bryan at the defensive end positions, of course, the, the redshirt freshman Washington at the nose guard. And they're backed up by some outstanding linebackers. Sean Williams has had a great year, Jameel Jackson, Jackson Stewart, and Rob, Bob Sneathan, a very good defensive end. Roberts, Atkins, Sean Smith, and Keith Price starting in the secondary. That's right, this week, Doug Graber forced to suspend five players for a violation of team conduct. Malik Jackson and Jay Bellamy, two starters, along with Geckler, are missing this game today. Also, Jim Guarnera and Kareem Williams. Doug said it wasn't a, a major problem, but he felt it had to be done. So the result is that Keith Price will see a lot of action today. He'll start at the left corner for Bellamy, and Sean Smith fills in for Malik Jackson. No question, George Chomp came in with something new, and it's been the quarterback situation. He's moved Van Meter there. Van Meter just ran the option, picked up some good yardage, moved the ball past the 40-yard line to the 37-yard line of Rutgers, and they're looking at a third down and short. Jefferson in motion, and Van Meter will put it up. Across the middle, nearly intercepted. A couple of Scarlet Knights had a chance at it. Doug Atkins and George Stewart. What a story George Stewart is. He's playing with two broken wrists. There you see the cast on each wrist. He almost had a chance to pick it off. As you watch him, he just set off the play action. He's got the tight end crossing underneath, almost a pick pattern. He overthrew the football. Very fortunate he didn't get an interception from Stewart, the junior out of Valley Cottage, New York. George Stewart, who has had 17 tackles through three games, as we get ready as Navy will go for it on fourth and three. Van Meter on the option, tries to turn it upfield, and he is stopped. Mike Spitzer, number 78, Sean Williams, number 92, all there for the Scarlet Knights, and that's a big play for this RU defense early. It sure is. They went on fourth down, tried to run the option. 
Rutgers, knowing that they might see uh, Van Meter at quarterback, knew they had to defend the option. They did defend it beautifully. Got big play out of Spitzer and Sean Williams. With 9.30 to play, first quarter, we're scoreless. We'll return to the Naval Academy right after this. Let's go down to the sidelines to Mike Mayock. Thanks, Pat. This field here at the Marine Corps Stadium is absolutely gorgeous. It's a natural turf field, but with all the rain they've had here the last two days, look for the bad footing on either side, the sidelines, because the field's crowned in the middle. It's real bad right around the sidelines. Keep your eyes open. Back upstairs. Greg Mitter fighting his way back to the line of scrimmage. Chez Snyder, a senior from Arlington, Texas, able to make the tackle. Snyder's not real tall. He's six foot, but he's 258. He's very quick. Had a good week last week against BC. That time he just beat the block on the line of scrimmage. Got penetration. Never gave Mitter a chance to make the cut. Bob, what Navy defense do you think we're seeing? Is it the one that played so aggressively against Virginia and came after him, or was the one that was more passive and leading against Boston College? No question. They're coming after. They're bringing the linebacker right here in this second down set. Made a gamble on the corner. Nearly picked off by Steve Lipsy, the junior from Savannah, a converted running back, and that will get the midshipman something to cheer about. Nearly a second interception by Brian Forte, who's now one for four with the previous INT. There's the inside linebacker coming in. That's Beck on the rush. They're going man coverage, 35. The, uh, the strong safety Lipsy took a chance on that football, almost came up with a big interception. So what are they doing? They're gambling. They're coming with their quickness, and they figure they're going to put pressure on Brian Forte. Third and ten. Forte collides in the backfield with Mitter. That play goes nowhere. Lipsy was there to make the tackle. So was Andy Person and Bob Kaberski. Understand Navy plays what's known as a five-man, a four-man front, and they have what's known as a, a, a nickel back constantly in the game. So there's always five defensive back, and they bring them from different positions. It's just bad coordination. Here it is, the third game of the season, and there's a big mix-up in the backfield between the starting tailback, Mitter, and the quarterback. And Rutgers, again, with a mistake, poor execution, has to punt the football. David Lippitz to punt. Mike Jefferson lets it bounce, and it goes out of bounds on the 22-yard line. So Navy will take over from their own 22 when we come right back here. Here with eight minutes left in the first quarter. The midshipmen, 4,300 strong and four from the Garden State. Will Carter, John Formosa, Rob Goodson, a defensive end who's banged up, and Kevin Hickman, the tight end we talked about from Cherry Hill. Van Meter will stay at quarterback. Jefferson in motion. Van Meter fakes the pitch, throws, and it's complete to Tom Pritchard. And Pritchard paid the price as he cut inside, tackled by Marshall Roberts, but not before he picked up a first down for the midshipman. Big play that time, little play action, reverse that, and throw back on a slant pattern of Pritchard. Pritchard, uh, the sophomore out of Hilton Head, South Carolina. Watch the play here, reverse, stop, and just hits him on the slant, and that tells you the kind of athlete this Van Mater is. Well executed, first down for Navy. And the midshipmen have lost Billy James with a sprain of the left shoulder. We're told he's out for the game, so the standing running back out. This time staying on the ground and fighting back to the line of scrimmage. That was number 22, Rob Edwards. Rob Edwards has come in at the tailback position right now for Billy James. Let's go down to Mike Mayock on the sidelines. Thanks, Patrick. Two things to keep your eye open for here. Number one, I was just over here at Rutgers, and they're very disappointed with the offensive line play. They thought they could move the ball up and down the field, and so far they haven't. Number two, for what it's worth, Ray Lucas is over here loosening up. Keep your eye open, guys back upstairs. Well, we've heard Stan Parrish talk about the outstanding athlete, Ray Lucas. Van Meter on the option, greeted by Sean Williams. And Williams just stretched those arms out, that big wingspan, and brings him down. Rutgers is very prepared for the option. They play the, they execute well against the option from a defensive standpoint because they have outstanding outside linebackers. And of course, Sean Williams is great at this and they get great support from their cornerback. Here's the choice. He thought for a minute of, of pitching it. He kept the football. Williams was there for the hit. Big play by the defense. They've done that all year. Third and seven for the midshipman. Van Meter, two of four for 22 yards passing. 
Jeter will roll to the left. Sneathan and Jamil Jackson in pursuit. But it was number 56, George Stewart, making the play. Stewart, you might say, butted him out of bounds. The great ability of this kid, uh, Van Meter. That time he had to outrun, the, outrun the, the perimeter coverage there, and he did, and he came up a little bit short for the first down. But this is, he's going to sprint and set up. He saw the pressure there. Sneathan forced him out of the pocket. He gets on the corner, and he almost comes up with the first down a little bit short. Van Meter and Rutgers is going to have to handle his, his play today, and so far they've done a good job. Greg Emery back to punt for the midshipman at his own 30-yard line. And Marshall Roberts for the Scarlet Knights on the 25. Eludes one tackler. Roberts across the 40, down to the 43-yard line. Marshall Roberts, who came in averaging 16 yards a return with a touchdown, able to give the Scarlet Knights some good field position. And we talk about what Rutgers has done so well this year, and one of the things has been their outstanding play as we look at already Ray Lucas coming in at quarterback. Their punt teams have been outstanding, and they've won the game in the punt game in the first three games against all opponents. And Roberts, with his veteran savvy, got the ball back over the 40-yard line for Ray Lucas to take this team offensively. Here comes the hero of the Colgate game, the man that ignited the Scarlet Knight offense. The handoff is to Mitter. And the Rutgers offensive line, as pointed out by Mike, Mike Mayock, has been allowing penetration. And here's Stacy Yop, number 95, making the tackle on Mitter. They're just running around blocks up front. And as uh, Mike Mayock reported, Rutgers' coaches are very disappointed, as you look at Yop right there, with the offensive line. Third, here they come again. First down, they, there were three blue shirts in the backfield. Mitter never had a chance to make a play. Loss of one, it's second and 11 as Lucas rolls right. Lucas, complete to sophomore Mario Henry from Medford and Lenape High School. And Henry, one of the young receivers we're going to begin to see throughout the year for Rutgers. Big play right there by Henry running the curl pattern, but more important by number one, Ray Lucas, who has the ability, and we know with his size and with his speed to get on the corner. They put pressure on person, the defensive end. Nice catch for the first down right there by Mario Henry. First down in Navy territory. Here's the pitch to Mitter, and Mitter. Again, finds the going difficult. Dave Shaw, number 62, was in the backfield and turned it up. And Mitter had nowhere to go. Chris Beck and Chez Snyder making the play. What Navy's doing defensively is that just before the snap, they're moving their front down linemen. They're either going to a four-man front, a five-man front, and then they're running around. They're looping around blocks. The Rutgers offensive line, as you look at Doug Graber, have not picked up those stunts. Quickness is what Navy's depending on right now to stop the running game. The loss of two, Mitter, six carries for no yards. Presley's in the ball game as Lucas delivers downfield complete to Jim Garantano. Garantano, his 18th reception of the year, He's got over 222 yards of receptions and two touchdowns to his credit. And here's what Ray Lucas gives the offense, the ability to get out of, the, get away from the pressure and the rush. And that time, Navy came after him. He got outside the pressure. When he's on the corner, he's going to have the choice of making a run or pass. That time, he saw Garantano, the veteran, came back to the quarterback to make the reception. Big play. And a big call here for Doug Graber in the Knights, third and one. Presley's the one back, and they hand off to Bruce Presley, and he's tripped up. He fumbled. Watch this play here. Watch the penetration again. They're going for third and one. Going to get the ball deep to Presley off here as he hands the ball back to him. Look at the penetration right there by number 78, Snyder, which never gives him a chance to cut. And as he's driven down, he's short of the first down. No gain, so Rutgers has got a tough one right here. Fourth down and one. And Rutgers will go. Fourth and one. From the 37 of Navy. High formation. 
Lucas has Bailey out in the flat wide open, and it's Bill Bailey who picks up the first down for the Scarlet Knights. Javier Zulialaga drove him out of bounds, but Bill Bailey, one of the juniors on this Rutgers team, honorable mention all Big East a couple of years ago, and he comes in and fills a big role for the Rutgers offense. What a big play by Ray Lucas that time. Again, the little play fake inside, rolls on the corner. He puts pressure now on the defense, and he slips Bailey into the flat. And gives him the football for the first down. That's what Navy's going to have to contend with with Lucas at quarterback. They're going to have to try to find a way to contain him. First and 10 from the 30. We've got movement on the right side of the Rutgers offensive line. Again, we talk about those kind of penalties, the penalties, the motion penalties, the legal procedure. There's Scott Vaughn, the junior from Phillipsburg. You saw his reaction. Second penalty of the afternoon for the Scarlet Knights. Doug Graber said this week, I can take aggressive mistakes that result in penalties. I can't live with those type of mistakes you made just by a lack of concentration. And already to today, 3.09 left in the first quarter. First and 15. TK Dorsey in motion. Lucas to Chris Brantley. First down, Rutgers at the 19-yard line. Joe Speed make the hit, but Brantley held on. Well executed. Again, off the play, Ferk fake that time. They had Brantley lined up on the side here. You're going to watch him. He's near the screen, and he's going to run in on a slant pattern. Good fake to the deep back. Gives Brantley a chance to get inside. Zone coverage by Navy wide open. Good execution, good concentration by Brantley. First down inside the 20-yard line for Rutgers. Chris Brantley, the junior from Teaneck. Ray Lucas is four for four for 47 yards. Here's Bruce Presley fighting his way down to the 11-yard line. Chris Hart, the outstanding sophomore defensive back for Navy, makes the tackle. But Bruce Presley averaging 5.5 yards a carry coming in today. ECAC Rookie of the Week. Against Pittsburgh, he had 63 yards rushing, 66 yards in receptions, and 33 yards on kick returns for 162 yards total offense. He's the big back that can get you on the corner, and that time he just had the speed to get on the corner and make that kind of yardage. Second and three, Lucas to Presley. Presley tripped up at the five-yard line. Tackled by the linebacker, Javier Zuluaga. Good job offensively that time by the Rutgers line. That time they made a big hole for Presley, took the ball deep, was just looking for the opening, ran up the left side behind Schiaffoni, the left guard, and Ken Damon, the left tackle, for a good game. The ball sitting inside the five-yard line. Now the Rutgers offense starting to go right at Navy. First down on the death, and now they've got four to go for a TD. First and goal from the four-yard line. And back here's where Doug Graver can turn to Presley, Russ Mitter. They pitch it to Presley, who avoids good penetration. Chris Shaw was in the backfield. Chris Beck made the stop. The reason that play didn't go as well, there was a little bit of problem with the execution from the snap by uh, Broadbent to the quarterback. He got the ball a little bit late. He lucky to hold on it. Watch this there. See him reach for the football. He had it way down. By the time he got it back to Presley, the defense had reacted very well and kept it to a no game. Second and goal from the four. Lucas. Intended for Chris Brantley. The coverage by Joe Speed, a freshman from Rundolph, Maryland. Good job secondary-wise by Speed that time. Just looking for the slant. Brantley coming in. One step drop to deliver the football, but he was blanketed. And now, Doug Graber and his freshman quarterback, Ray Lucas, are in an interesting set of third and about five yards to go. Third and goal on the five-yard line. Third down and goal at the five. Garantano and Brantley are split to the right. Number 19, Lance Avina, a good possession receiver, is split to the left. From the shotgun, Ray Lucas. Pulls it down and is pulled down himself. Chris Beck. Very interesting call. Come out in the shotgun, third and goal. The ball on the five, they run a that was a draw all the way with uh, with uh, Lucas at the 
deep back position in the shotgun. Here it is. He takes a step back, and he ducks under. He's looking for the hole. Good pursuit right here. And 47, the veteran Chris Beck comes off the block to make the hit and forces Rutgers to go for three. Presley didn't have much of a block on Chris Beck. Beck, the 1991 ECAC Player of the Week. Here is John Benestad. A 21-yard field goal. It's up. It's good. So Rutgers able to cash in with a three-point field goal from John Benestad. We've got 45 seconds left in the first quarter. We'll take a break. Rutgers leading Navy 3-0. NJN's College Football 92 was made possible by a grant from PSCNG. The power is in your hands. Whenever I want to catch up what's going on in New Jersey, I just watch NJN. NJN is definitely the New Jersey channel. Keeps us up to date on uh, local news, uh, state government, sports, and it is the New Jersey channel. What would you do without NJN? Well, Ray Lucas has done it again. He gets the Scarlet Knights on the board in relief of Brian Forte, just as he did against Colgate and Rutgers, leading 3-0. John Benestad getting set to kick off. Benestad now 3 of 5 on the end, field goal tries. And this one is fielded on the 5. And out to the 21-yard line. Lionel Hines, the tailback from Silver Spring, Maryland. Don't forget, at the conclusion of our quarter, we'll provide extra analysis, talk to those making the plays in that first quarter. Our NJN extra points. Stick around between quarters. There's the time remaining in the first quarter, 39 seconds. As Jason Van Meter continues at quarterback. Pensacola, Florida. A do-it-all player for this Navy offense. He goes out in the flat. It's complete to speed. Or Jimmy Screen, rather. And Screen. Down to the 28-yard line before Doug Atkins, the senior from Hackensack, made the stop. Excellent execution. Here is Van Meter, forced into the quarterback position because of injuries. He goes back. He's looking to the left side. There's nothing there. He takes his time and finds screen on the right side, open enough to get him the football, pick up seven yards. It's going to be interesting for Navy to stay in the ball game offensively. They're going to have to get some improvisation out of number five Van Meter, and they're getting it early in this football game. Number 22, Rob Edwards is the running back. A hand off to Edwards, and he goes nowhere. Tackled for loss at the 25-yard line. Bob Sneathan had a very active day against Colgate. Comes in with 18 tackles, two sacks, and three tackles for loss. As we open the second quarter, Van Meter at quarterback. Option to Jefferson on the end around, and he's stopped by Sean Williams, who stayed home to make the play. How many times have we seen that early in this season? People trying to run reverses or counters. They can't do it against Williams. That's experience. You, you described it perfectly. The ball goes away from you. You're on the corner. You hang around and look and secure the corner. Watch this play. Perfectly executed at that point, except for 92. Big play again, Sean Williams. Greg Emery. He has emerged as the leader of this Rutgers defense as Greg Emery stands on his six-yard line and gets it away to Marshall Roberts on the 47, across the 50. So the Scarlet Knights inherit good field position again. Credit the defense and Sean Williams. Credit the defense and Sean Williams and credit Ed O'Neill and the job he's done this year with the special teams as we see him right there on the sideline on the right-hand corner there. They have pins and Bob is doing a great job with special teams. He sure is. Rutgers taking over the ball on the 49-yard line of Navy. Ray Lucas continues at quarterback. This time it's a screen pass to Presley. And Presley scampers down to the 41-yard line. Chris Beck reached out and tripped him up. Good call, well executed by Lucas. He dropped back, set it up perfectly as we look at Travis Broadbent, who's had his share of problems this year with injuries starting in preseason. That's a tough one there for the, for the veteran from Tyrone, Pennsylvania. 
But that was a well-executed screen play to uh, Presley. And Ray Lucas really uh, looks like an experienced quarterback at times. He's done a nice job so far in this ball game, moving the football. And now the Rutgers offensive line has a another predicament. Not only is Navy playing very well and confusing it with its different defensive schemes, but Travis Broadbent, now the starting center, Presley. And Presley yeah. picks up the first down across the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Zuluaga, junior linebacker from Indianapolis, one of five freshmen to letter in 1990 for the midshipman, makes the stop, and here's Presley. So far, Presley has looked good. He, he picks up his blocks beautifully. He has that hesitation, and he just moves to the opening to get the first down. Here's Presley, New Jersey Player of the Year. Holds the high school record for scoring with 559 points. Lucas off the play fake. Intended for Mario Henry, and a flag flies, and it might be offensive interference. Yeah, it could be defensive interference, yeah, too. The way that defensive back picked off the Rutgers receiver is going to be an interesting call. We were both very close to the ball. I don't know that he could have caught the ball, even if it was no interference. Interference on the defense. Well, the, oh, man, is George Chomp upset. He is living on the sideline because he felt his man had a better shot at the ball than the receiver. Big break for Rutgers. They get the ball now deep in Navy territory. Again, good execution by Ray Lucas off the play fake as you look at George Chomp. Graduate of Bloomsburg in Pennsylvania. Chomp 6-18 here in his third season at Navy. The 33rd Naval Academy head coach. And he knows that he can't afford to have those kind of things go against him. He's got to play it a lot closer in order to stay in this ballgame with Rutgers with the injuries that he's already had with this club uh, so early in the season. Rutgers gains 16 yards on the penalty. There's the handoff to Presley, who bangs off one would-be tackler and gets down to the 20-yard line for a gain of two. Stacy Yop and Chris Beck there making the stop with Presley earned those two yards the hard way. Bob. You know, Presley came into this game. He's had a shoulder problem. He's had a strained knee problem, and it was a question whether he might play against this team, but he plays hard, and he just broke that tackle and turned what could have been a loss into a two-yard game. Offensive coordinator Stan Perry says he's an animal. In fact, he has to take a little better care of himself because he'll put the shoulder down, lower the helmet, and then bang into tacklers. Lucas quickly incomplete intended for Jim Garantano. That time he lost his footing in the setup. The field is wet, and right there, he, as he was trying to set off a two-step drop to deliver the ball quickly to Garantano, his feet went out from under him, and he short, uh, short on the play. Doug Graber celebrating his 48th birthday today and looked like a victory to aid in the celebration. He'd particularly like a victory on the road. He wants to get that uh, snide off his back. You know? Their only road win came in East Lansing against Michigan State last year. Lucas on third down. Good reception by Jim Garantano. Joe Speed with the coverage there, but Garantano very patiently waited for the ball and made the catch on the eight-yard line, so it's a first down and goal to go for the Scarlet Knights. And there he is. He's leading the Big East with his catches per game. That was a triple set. They had three receivers to one side, and again, what's helping the Rutgers offense now is the ability of Ray Lucas to get on the corner and get away from pressure, and then he puts the pressure on the defense, and that time, Garantano just knew where he was in the field, made sure he had the first down, and came back to catch the ball. Dorsey in an H-back position for Rutgers. Presley across the five-yard line and no further. He's tackled by Beck and Zuluaga. And you're starting to see Rutgers offense picking up inside, a little better blocking scheme that time. Kenny Damon, Schifoni on the left guard position, gave him enough to get up and get to the five-yard line. And Navy, as quick as they are and as well as they've played, they're starting to be a long time defensively on the field, and that can only wear against them. Offensive line coach Mark Deal, the Scarlet Knights, felt that his guys have played fairly well against Pittsburgh with the exception of the penalties. And Doug Kavulic, number 61, played it out extremely well. Presley down to the two yard line, ball loose. The midshipman recovered. The anchor back, Chad Chatlow. So they'll fire the cannon on that moment. 
big play defensively for Navy. They needed it right there as he was breaking. You're going to see it. Chatlos, he's the guy that recovered it. But watch the hit up front here. Just get the ball deep to Presley as he comes in there. He is hit. The ball comes out. The tackle was made by Stacy Yop and Lipsy from the strong safety position, number 35. Watch this play. Lipsy comes right up, the junior out of Savannah, Georgia, and he's going to make that play low. As you see Yop come off the block there, he, Lipsy comes underneath him, and it comes out. A definite fumble, big turnover. Let's go. For me. Come on, O. Chad Chatlos, who came into the game with an interception in Navy's last six games comes up with the fumble recovery. And now the midshipmen stay on the ground. Clavon Smith, the fullback with his first carry of the afternoon. It's going to be interesting. They've lost their, their tailback, Billy James, early in the game. Their other tailback, Van Meters, at quarterback. So they may have to come to Smith a little bit more for any kind of a running game. George Chomp had been an assistant at Ohio State. From 1968 to 78, Buckeyes won the Big Ten Championship eight times, including a national championship while he was there. Here's Van Meter doing what he does well, getting out on the corner, pulling the ball down and picking up a first down, so that gives the midshipmen some room to operate as Sean Smith made the stop. Smart call because Van Meter's going to keep the ball here no matter what happens. Reverses out, rides in his fullback right there, reads number 44, 5 Pete. Price coming up from the cornerback position and decides he's going to keep the football and get it close to the first down marker, and he did that. He's looking at a third and very short. Excuse me, that is third and one as they mark the ball inside the 10-yard line. This is Rob Edwards. First down, Navy. Edwards in the breach now. The sophomore. Carrying the football from the tailback position because of injury. Got just enough to keep the first day, get the first down and keep possession for Navy. And important here for the Rutgers defense to see if they can get the ball back and get in a good field position. But give a lot of credit to that guy right there, number five, Jason Van Mater. High formation. They hand off to the tailback. Bob Edwards. Interesting formation, Bob, in that they can move the flanker in motion, and uh, he can be another option on the uh, on the option for Van Meter. Exactly. You're reading it perfectly. They, they bring him out here. They hand the ball to the tailback. You're going to see the sequence to that, which is the quarterback coming down the line of scrimmage and the, the flanker who came in motion being the possibility of getting the pitch. Gain of two. Here he comes. There's Van Meter, he'll turn it upfield. Van Meter wrapped up by Andrew Beckett, number 98, the junior from Barrington, New Jersey, out of Haddon Heights High School. Van Meter's not particularly fast, but he's quick. He's got quick feet, and that's what makes him so effective. As you see him run the option, he dips it up inside, and he's got a lot of experience, only a junior, but he's played against the best of it, and he's been in this position before, and so far, he's keeping Navy in the ball game offensively. He's carried seven times for 25 yards, third and one. Van Meter, this time they'll pitch, and it's a first down for Clavon Smith, number four. Ran the option back into the sideline, away from the wide side of the field, away from the strength of the Rutgers defense, and just enough. Good choice by Van Meter in pitching the ball, and he gets it to the big fullback that time, who gets the first down. George Chomp running things in with alternating Mike Kozub and Steve Belak. First and Maybe now with five first downs as they're beginning to get things together offensively. Van Meter complete to Kozum. Kozum stays on his feet and is brought down at the 26-yard line. Jamil Jackson, the linebacker who was in coverage. Let's go down to our former defensive back, Mike Mayock. Thank you, Patrick. More bad news for the Rutgers offensive line. Travis Broadbent, they're all Big East center, had his right knee, the one he had scoped at the first day of uh, camp this year. It slipped out of place again. It looks like he's done for the day. What that means is Doug Kovulic, the starting guard, moves over to center, and Maurice Owens moves into guard. Back upstairs. Okay. Tough loss. Tough loss there. Here's the double tight end formation. The handoff to Edwards. 
And that midshipman offensive line is beginning to back up the Squirrel and Knight defense. Good job on the left side, number 68. Blair Soak the left tackle. Greg Hubbard, the left guard, opened up enough. And uh, Edwards, the sophomore, is gaining confidence now as he's thrust into this situation. And he, and he just found the first down marker. A very impressive drive here for Navy, taking the ball from their own one-yard line with consecutive first downs here out and beyond their 30. Edwards, a sophomore tailback for Martinez, Georgia. And here he goes again. Interesting how how George Chomp, the Navy coach, has gone to the running game, just picking their holes, getting three, getting four, and throwing off a very safe formation. A little play action, dumps the ball to the fullback. But the key to it all is Jason Van Mater, and Van Mater is executing well. Steve Bellick, number 23, brings the play in. Another sophomore. There's Chomp. Navy football will recapture the glory. Van Meter on uh, the keep gets back to the line of scrimmage. George Stewart, Valley Cottage, New York, the junior. They call him no arm, as you know. You described <laughs> the fact that he's had two broken uh, arms, and he called him no arm Stewart. But that time he got penetration and made the play and kept Van Meter to no gain. Now Navy with a third and five. This is a perfect setup for the short control pass. Let's see if Rutgers decides to come after him or uh, play the secondary and play, play good coverage. Thus far, they've looked for Tom Pritchard a lot in this situation, the split receiver. Screen is split to the left. Jefferson was scrambling to get back to the line of scrimmage, and Van Meter will call timeout. 6.47. Left here in the second quarter, a very important drive for the midshipmen. They took over. This is women now, 430 women in the academy right now. They've admitted women since 1976. Third down, six to go. Van Meter, complete first down. He was looking to Tom Pritchard, the sophomore from Hilton Head, South Carolina, on a quick slant in, and the midshipmen are in great field position now you can't throw it any better and you, and you can't defend it much better than marshall roberts does on the corner but he puts the ball low and away and there's no way the defender can get the ball he gets it to him gets the first down and then just nickel and diamond him up the field here and all of a sudden you look up and the ball's on the 42 yard line the navy's got a really impressive drive going and tom pritchard came off the field and is on the bench right now holding an elbow we'll let you know on that here's clavon smith Getting out to midfield. Coming into this ball game, George Chomp was asked, uh, you know, even though you're 0-2, you haven't scored, what are the bright spots on this football team? And he said, well, defensively, we're coming together. We're coming together. We played extremely well in the second half against BC. So far in this game, they've played extremely well as we look at Pritchard on the sideline. Sort of hanging in there and trying to get himself together to get back in this ball game. But we have to, to conclude what Chomp said, we've got to start making our offense go. And he's got it going right now with Jason Van Meter at quarterback. Pritchard's made three catches for 32 yards as Van Meter runs the option, turns it upfield. Tripped up at the 45-yard line, but not before he got very close to first down yardage. Nose tackle Ibrahim Washington made the stop for the Scarlet Knights. But Van Meter is moving the chains. Here we go. He comes reversing out. There's the motion man. He's got 22. That's Edwards. He could be the, the trail back here, the pitch man. He fakes to the fullback, gets a block from Smith, the fullback, and decides to tuck it up inside. We talk about those quick feet going all the time. Another first down for Navy. Van Meter has nine carries for 33 yards. And remember, this drive began back on the midshipman's two-yard line. Substitutions in the game for, for Rutgers. Mike Spitzer has come in at the nose position for Washington. And it looks like uh, Van Meter had really got a got a good hit that time as he came out uh, off that option. He's just taking a little time here to catch his breath while he's got a time. Don't forget, next week on NJN's College Football 92, the Nittany Lions of Penn State come to Giant Stadium. And we'll be there for full game coverage. Penn State and Rutgers next Sunday morning right here on NJN, the New Jersey Channel. Greg Graver would like to go into that 3-1. A lot of work ahead here against the midshipman, Van Meter. 
bootleg right. And he's driven out by Marshall Roberts at the 40-yard line. Bob, was that a uh, naked bootleg? I think it was. It looked to me like it was designed that way. He brought it on the corner. Excellent adjustment, though, by Roberts, the veteran on the corner. Wasn't fooled by it. Kept into a very short game. Back into the game now is uh, number 89, Kevin Hickman, the big tight end. And uh, at the wideout position, Jimmy Screen is in at the wideout position. He's a junior out of Baton Rouge. And Pritchard, of course, shows back up. So they got their three best receivers in the football game right now. He's split to the left. Second down. Van Meter almost stumbles in the backfield. Oh, baby, Sean Williams hit him there, but Van Meter stays on his feet. A courageous effort by Van Meter. But he'll still lose three yards. Sean Williams made the hit but wasn't able to wrap him up. Bob Sneathan finally finished things up for the Scarlet Knights. Again, they're run, running the option. He trips over his fullback. That stops this thing and slows it down. Here he makes a big decision to go back the other way as he gets away from uh, Williams that time. But Rutgers defensively, good speed, good pursuit. Bring him down, and he actually lost a couple of yards in the play, so he's looking at third down and 10. What a hit he took from Sean Williams. He goes 6'2", 247 pounds. The lone back is Edwards. The man beater on a straight drop. Complete to Michael Jefferson. <laughs> this First kid, down, Navy. What an exhibition. He got hit after he threw the ball. I want to tell you, he's hurting right now, man beater. But he, he threw the ball from midfield all the way across to the right to the sideline with enough on it for his receiver to come back and make the play. Watch Rutgers, they blitz the linebacker. The linebacker is picked up by the sophomore 22. Edwards gives Van Meter enough time to just get enough on this throw to make the first down. I mean, these are heroics that are going on right now as they stay tough as Mike Jefferson, Michael Jefferson from Carson, California, made the catch. A 12-yard gain and a first down for the midshipman from the 31. Van Meter looking inside. Picked off by Sean Smith. Sean Smith out to the 40. Dragged out of bounds at the 43-yard line by Rob Edwards. But Sean Smith getting a start for Malik Jackson. Comes up with a big play here in the second quarter. He sure does. And Sean Smith, as you mentioned, he's getting a start, but he has experience. He's been under the gun before. And this time, it looks like Van Bader just misreads the, uh, the, the route of his uh, receiver as he puts the ball up here. His receiver is not there yet. Actually, he never saw Sean Smith coming from that safety position. Big play by Smith to break up the drive, get the ball back in the Rutgers uh, offensive hands with four minutes left in the second quarter. Big play by Sean Smith, the junior free safety. And now Raymond Lucas, the redshirt freshman, takes over as Rutgers operates from eye formation. Lucas looking downfield for Brantley. Complete at the 20-yard line. Chris Brantley from Ray Lucas. And there we see it again, Bob. Lucas sprinting out to the right and delivering the ball on the move. Great route by Brantley, just ran up the sideline, up pattern, but an execution and giving, throwing the football as well as you possibly can. Watch Lucas on the corner as he comes here. He puts this ball in a perfect position. There's the fake that gave Brantley a chance to go by the defender. The pass is perfectly thrown right over the defender's hand and a great concentration and catch by Brantley. Big gain, Rutgers with the ball on the 20-yard line. In fact, the 36-yard gain. Mitter back in the game, and Mitter is back to the line of scrimmage. Chris Beck making his presence felt. Beck coming off ankle surgery in the spring. You know, Mitter suffered a deep thigh bruise, and he was hobbled all week. That time he looked like he may, he just couldn't make the cut. Now, whether it's the turf, it's kind of wet there or not, but he never had a chance to make the cut upfield as Beck came from the linebacker's position to make the hit. So though, as you look at this Rutgers offense, the offense for what they've generated has been Ray Lucas's ability to get on the corner and throw the football. And now they're looking at a second down and 10. Lucas has it intercepted. Who else but Chad Chetlos? His third interception of the year, that is seven straight games that he's picked 
off him. Pass for the midshipman. Shatlos is, is called the anchor. What it means is he's a nickel back. They always have five defensive backs in the game, and Chatlos can be anywhere on the line of scrimmage in the second. This time he comes from inside out, reads Ray Lucas's eyes, and gets right up in front of the receiver, the intended receiver, Brantley, and makes a big interception. And Rutgers in the first half has been terribly inconsistent. Oh, boy, there's your story, Chatlos, who recovered a fumble, came up with an interception. The Scarlet Knights are struggling, as you said. Now here's the handoff to Clavon Smith, and Smith gets one, maybe two, greeted by a host of Scarlet Knights. Maybe in their last possession, took the ball on her own two-yard line, held it for over seven minutes before they turned it over with an interception. And that's okay. They didn't get any points, but I think for George Chomp, if he can stay close in this ball game at halftime, he's got every reason to think that, you know, he's going to have an opportunity. Rutgers, on the other hand, has stumbled and stammered offensively, and really, except for the exploits of Ray Lucas making some big plays, offensively, they've been very unimpressive, and their defense has been on the field a lot. Come on, Tom. Two and a half minutes left in the half. Van Meter pitching to Rob Edwards, and he'll... Get knocked out of bounds, Sean Smith up from the secondary to make the stop. Rutgers is reading the, the option extremely well. Beautiful oh, pursuit that time, and, and Edwards came all the way from the inside from his safety position. But here's the option as they come down. They string it out well, uh, playing at home, doing his job as Sneathan. And as he pitches the ball out, there's Smith coming all the way from the secondary to make the hit. I think they're starting to recognize that play. What they got to be ready for is for somewhere along the way Van Meter coming off that with a play fake and throwing the football. Because that, I'm sure, is in their plan somewhere down the road. Third and ten. Edwards in motion. Van Meter had an ocean as he looked downfield for Clavon Smith. And he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Sean Williams. And we've got a injured Scarlet Knight. That's Marshall That's Roberts. Marshall Roberts. Actually, he came from the cornerback position and made the hit on Van Meter. Big play. And again, the kind of football player that he's been, he can't afford to lose him at all because he not only is a, an outstanding athlete, but emotionally he's a terrific player for this Rutgers team. And one of the points that Doug Graber made earlier this week, Bob, is that if they do get into a situation where they have to substitute, where they get nicked up, don't forget, you don't have Jay Bellamy. You don't have Tim Geckler. You don't have Malik Jackson in the secondary. Graber was worried about having to uh, lose a front liner or two as they're working on his left ankle and get into a, a backup situation where Kelly Woodward would come in, a, a junior, Mark Washington, a freshman. And you're looking at Doug Graber and the frustration shows right there. Here he is coming into this game, almost a 17-point favorite. A little over two minutes remaining in the first half, and he's up 3-0, and he has not... His team has not looked impressive, particularly on offense, but he's had a couple of key injuries. Broadbent already out with uh, some knee problems. And Marshall Roberts, hopefully, getting up on his feet right here. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Don't forget, coming up this Thursday on NJN, from 8 to 9 o'clock, join me for Sports World. Rutgers football coach Doug Graber joins me for the first half hour as we talk Scarlet Knight football and Big East football. In our second half hour, our guest this week will be Jerry Eisenberg, the Newark Star Ledger. We'll talk about the Pride Bowl that's coming up, Ramapo and Montclair State. That's all on Sports World. It'll be Thursday night on NJN. Greg Emery. Greg Emery is back to punt on his own two-yard line. The Knights have ten players lined up to go after him. Of course, it is not Roberts. Back to receive the punt as Emery gets it away. Instead, it is Garantano. Punt goes out of bounds. And they'll position it at the 35-yard line. So Rutgers, they didn't get the ball, but they forced Emery into a bad punt. And they'll take over in Navy territory. Once again, their special teams. That time, the punting team that put the pressure on, forced a bad punt, get the ball back again in very good field position for their offense with two minutes and three seconds left in the first first half so that's uh, another example of how especially teams in all areas have performed for Rutgers thus far this season Rutgers comes out with three wide receivers 203 left as Ray Lucas will get to operate the two-minute drill for sure 
Lucas to Garantano who curled back for the ball and gets down to the 20 yard line. Good read by Lucas and a good read by the receiver to curl back into an open area, Bob. A veteran receiver. They have three receivers to that side. They've got zone coverage. He goes down, gets his first down, comes back to the football. Very hard to defend that because they spread the field. As Mike Mayock talked earlier, they spread that field. And the linebackers have to get underneath that to make the play. Hard assignment for linebackers coming inside out. First and 10 from the 20. Mitter with room. Craig Mitter, 10-5. Touchdown, Rutgers! Tailback Craig Minner goes 20 yards for the Rutgers touchdown. Good job on the right side offensively for Rutgers with uh, Owens and Vaughn in the right tackle position. Opened up a big hole as Craig Minner came up with a good play. A big run here to get Rutgers on the board before the half. Emotionally, this is a big play. A little draw action almost as he gets the ball back to him. He breaks off the right side, breaks the tackle there with his size and his speed. And just runs over people to get into the end zone. That's a big score. That's a big score, Pat, because they needed something to go in at halftime uh, feeling good about themselves. Rutgers contingent across the way. Some scarlet and cream and John Benestad. Point after try is good. Benestad now 11-11 on point after attempts. And with 129 left here in the first half, Ray Lucas and Craig Bitter put seven on the board for the Scarlet Knights. They lead 10-0. But it all came from the fact that their second, their uh, punt rush team put a lot of pressure on the Navy punter, forced him to pour, uh, get a bad kick. They got good field position with time on the clock and a chance to get some points, and they did it very quickly. So Ray Lucas, we talked about it at the top of the broadcast. With Brian Forte got off slowly, and he did with an interception, and the offense was moving uh, with, with some problems. Lucas comes off and again provides a spark. Well, a beautiful setting today at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Much different picture than yesterday with the 30 mile an hour winds and driving rain. John Benestad, junior from Boca Raton, Florida. Kick off. Michael Jefferson is back to receive on the Navy two yard line. And it's Jefferson taking on the seven. Jefferson has flags fly, tackled at the 21 yard line. Good coverage that time. Not a long kick by Benestad, but good coverage by those uh, Rutgers defenders coming down. They squeezed uh, Jefferson. Looks like a flag was thrown and maybe a penalty to back Navy up even further. Illegal block in the back above the waist by the return. Bobby Ward makes the call and it was Bill Bailey making the stop. George Chomp. Taking the opportunity to huddle with Jason Van Meter. Tony Gillis, the other tight end, coming into the ball game. Here's the Rutgers scoring summary. Three plays covering 35 yards in just 36 seconds. And Craig Mitter, a 20-yard touchdown scamper to put the Scarlet Knights up 10-0. Time, 1.24 left. Van Meter heading off straight ahead and difficult running. Interesting here with a trailing 10 nothing with uh, just a little more than a minute to go. Rutgers decides to call timeout, use their timeouts because maybe they can get the ball back again before this half ends. Meanwhile, uh, Navy looking perhaps just to take the time off the clock and go back and regroup at, at halftime with their offense. So with 112 left, timeout Rutgers is there. He hope to get the ball back one more time. Let's go down to Mike Mayock. Mike? Thanks, Pat. I was just over with Marshall Roberts. He rolled over that left ankle. They've untaped him. They've got ice tape back over it now. It's bad news. I'm not sure we're going to see him. And what that means is we're now three deep on the corner. We've got number 29, Kelly Woodward, going in, a junior defensive back. Uh, 
I don't know that much about Kelly Woodward. He's a junior. He's a third-team corner. So the suspensions have not really played any kind of major impact on today's game. But with Marshall Roberts going down, keep your eyes open on number 29. He's the guy they might go after. Back up to the booth. Kelly Woodward is a junior from Columbia, Maryland. He's a transfer out of uh, Garden City Community College and uh, former quarterback, a good athlete, hasn't played a lot, but uh, he's got some size, he's got some speed, and I think uh, he's gonna see a lot of action from here on. One of four Rutgers players making their return to Maryland today. And Rutgers will again call timeout. Rob Edwards, the ball carrier, tackled by Roger Jeffries. You talk about Kelly Woodward, number 29, that was all Metro two years as both a quarterback and a defensive back in the D.C. area. Yeah, he's a good athlete. Rutgers utilizing their timeouts uh, in good uh, style right now, forcing Navy, looking at a third down and about five. Uh, if they don't come up with the first down, the possibility of getting the football back before the half. And that's the way you got to play the game, and they're doing it very well. And again, their defense is coming up and rising to the occasion. What is uh, George Chop uh, plotting on the sideline with Van Mater? Does he does he afford to put the ball up here and try and get the first down? They have not been successful in running the football in these situations. They've tried the option, but Rutgers is uh, adjusting, reading the option well, and with their team speed, have uh, cut off the corners and really forced Van Mater when he runs it to, to keep the ball the majority of the time. And if Van Mater does throw the ball and it's incomplete, the clock will stop again, and Rutgers will get the ball back with less than a minute. Doug Graber in his third season as head coach of the Scarlet Knights. Feeling a lot better after that last touchdown, <laughs> believe right. me. He's a little bit more comfortable going in. 10 nothing. Here we go from the I formation. Van Meter pitches to Rob Edwards and Edwards gets out of bounds and is knocked out of bounds by Doug Atkins. Very close to the first down Very marker, close. and I think he might have gotten it. Clock stops with 58 seconds left, and it is a first down, so Rob Edwards comes up big for the midshipman. Now with 58 seconds left, George Chop has a chance if he wants to to gamble and see if he can get something deep. Rutgers, of course, will be looking for that, playing deep in the secondary. As May, Mike Mayock reported, Kelly Woodward, the junior, is protecting the wide side of the field against the receiver, Michael Jefferson. Let's see if they try to go up top to him. Jefferson is put to the right. Richard to the left. Van Meter, feeling the heat, fumbles. Recovered by Sean Williams. Touchdown, Rutgers! Touchdown, Rutgers! That is a strange play. I want to tell you, I don't know what Van Meter was doing there. That'll excite the Scarlet Knight fans. Keith Bryant was able to bat the ball loose, and Sean Williams able to pick it up and return it for a touchdown. Let's see this. As he comes out here, he comes out of a play fake. It's almost like a bootleg fake as he sets up. There's the pressure by Keith Bryant. There's the fumble right up in the air, and there is the experience of number 92, Sean Williams picking it up in a dead run and scoring right here. Look at that scoop. And the big guy gets in, and that, he deserves it for the way he's played defense <laughs> throughout his career at New Brunswick. Roger Jeffries and Keith Bryant as Benistad is good with the extra point. So with 47 seconds left, just after it looked like Rutgers wouldn't get the ball back, the big defensive play excites the Scarlet Knight fans across the way, and they now lead 17 to nothing. What a tough blow for George Chomp. He's really devastated by that play. Now he's going to the official, and he's trying to say he threw the ball forward, and it wasn't a fumble, but maybe a fo forward pass, as we look at him on the sideline walking right down here with, uh, with the official. The question is, as the uh, Scarlet Knight cheering contingent across the way uh, steals the page from the page. There's a push-up for every point. They're up to 17. And here's George. He's explaining it to him. I don't think that's an argument he'll uh, Not now. He'll it's win. over with. The call was made. Talk about 
some of the quarterbacks that George Chop has worked with at Ohio State, Arch Schleister, Rex Kern. But also a one-time Tampa Bay Buccaneer offensive backfield assistant coach. Doug Graber was the defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers, but they were not in Tampa Bay at the same time. Here's Benestad. Good kick by Benestad, and Michael Jefferson will down the ball, and the midshipmen will take over from their own 20 with 47 seconds left here in the first half. You know, Bob, the 17-0 score, you think that's really deceptive because it is not going to have that Rutgers is dominated. Well, two touchdowns. The last touchdown comes from a fumble running for a score. The other touchdown comes from a and rush by the punt team, which forces a bad punt, gets great field position. Within three plays, Rutgers gets the score. So here we go. There's 47 seconds left, and let's see if uh, Navy's content to just go in at halftime and try to regroup. They'll operate from the I formation. Van Meter to Edwards. Out to the 25-yard line. Gain of five for Rob Edwards. Bear in mind that Billy James, who came into the game with 24 carries for 111 yards, injured a shoulder early on and is out for the rest of the game. That has allowed Rob Edwards to come in. He's got 11 carries for 29 yards. You talk about how Rutgers scored and the fact that they got, you know, they've taken advantage of situations, but that's what happens when you get pretty good. You win games on, in various ways. And so far, they won the games as we watch Edwards again running back up inside and getting tougher each time he carries the ball. But Rutgers is at a point now where they can win the game in different ways, and that time they've scored two touchdowns, one off their kicking team and the other off their defense. Now nine seconds left, and Van Meter calls time. You see a good crowd coming down. 95, 90, 97 here into Annapolis. Well, there you take a look at some of the uh, the battles that the Navy has fought. They uh, they line the stadium here on the uh, the gold and blue side. Sicily, the, the Philippines, and there's a great story about Lou Holtz when he was coaching at William and Mary. Yeah, Lou Holtz brought his team over here on a Friday afternoon to work out. And as they were warming up, he looked up and saw this facade and all these great battles on the on the stadium uh, mezzanine level, late day golf. He brought his team together just before they broke up, and he said, fellas, one thing we know about the Navy, and you got to give them credit, they play one heck of a schedule. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. So here we go with what may perhaps be the last play of the half. Nine seconds left. Van Meter trying to throw a screen to Glavon Smith. It's incomplete, and that'll stop the clock with five seconds left. Trying to run a little inside screen that time as he faded away, trying to get the ball up to Smith and catch the Rutgers defense, hope that he gets some field position out of it. But the Navy offense looks very tired now. Two bad breaks going against him. He's turned into scores for Rutgers, but that's the way it goes in the right now. The question that faces Navy at halftime is whether they can go in and try to generate some offense. Rutgers, meanwhile, goes in with a commanding 17 to nothing lead. Jefferson in motion. Van Meter with Keith Bryant behind him. Clavon, Scarlet Knights cashing in. Plays to jump out to a 17 nothing lead. Michael Jefferson. Down the ball. Rutgers kicked down to the end zone so by Jefferson. Off the touchback, will take over on their own 20-yard line. Our first half stats pretty even, except for those couple of big plays. Rutgers cashed in for touchdowns. A couple of big plays by uh, Ray Lucas on his passing that uh, created the difference from 129 to 64 yards. But everything else has been even. And two big plays from a defense and from a, a, a punt rush that uh, forced a bad punt on the part of Navy led to two scores for Rutgers. So it's 17-0. Maybe gets a chance here, and a new quarterback comes on the scene. Number 10 is Steve Sioni, the senior from Tampa, who we thought might start the game. Instead, Jason Van Meter did. But it's Sioni at quarterback. Edwards at the running back, and there's a botched exchange as the ball is loose. There is Steve Sioni. Talking about quarterbacks, there's your comparison between Ray Lucas and uh, Jason Van Meter. Uh, Lucas, 8 for 11, 118 yards. Pretty impressive. 
but still the Rutgers offense was sluggish when it came from the running attack. But Van Meter rushing the football 13 times for a total of 16 yards, running the option most of the time. But now George Chomp has changed his tactics, and he's come with Steve Sioni, the senior out of Tampa, Florida. And that snap you saw is an example of perhaps his nervousness or his lack of playing time as he backed away from the center before he got the snap. Shades of the Jets Browning Nagel at his first snap this season as he dropped it for a fumble. This time, though, George Chomp and Navy able to recover and maintain possession. Steve Sioni, a senior, saw his first action against Boston College last weekend. It was 2 of 5 for 23 yards, and he threw two interceptions. Well, you have a chance. Let's go down on the sidelines to Mike Mayock. Mike? Thank, thank you, Patrick. Just a quick injury update here. Number 54, Travis Broadbent, is definitely out for the rest of the game. As far as number 22, Marshall Roberts, he tried all during halftime to get that ankle loosened up. All kinds of drills, back pedal forward, just grimacing with pain all the time. Right now, he's doubtful. We'll say they'll give him a shot if he can, but I don't think we're going to see Marshall Roberts in the second half. Back up to the booth. Bob, certainly Doug Graber hopes he doesn't have to go back to Marshall Roberts. Absolutely. He needs Marshall Roberts for the long campaign, and I saw him warming up a little bit of trying to do those exercises uh, at halftime, and his biggest problem was backpedaling. So maybe they'll ice him. Hopefully he'll have a, a chance to come back this week and get ready for their next game. Second and 10 at the 20. Well, it's Here's the handoff to Rob Edwards, and Edwards turns the corner, gets out to the 26-yard line, pushed out of bounds by Doug Atkins. Edwards playing because of the injury early on in this ball game to Billy James. Billy James, the tailback, went down with an injury, and Edwards has, cut, has had to come on, and he's only a sophomore, but he's carried the ball well in this first half. Edwards will come out on third and four. Pritchard split to the left. Screen to the top. Sioni looks left. Look out. Nearly picked off, and it is intercepted. Keith Price stayed with the ball for Rutgers, and Keith Price makes the interception, his first of the season. A sophomore from Jersey City. That's what happens when you force the ball, and especially when you force it into the middle. You get a tap, you get a tip here, and the ball comes back. Here's Sioni coming back. He's looking in the middle. He's waiting for the end, of the wide receiver to come open. He's forced out of it. The rush there by uh, number 78, Spitzer. As he puts the ball up, there's the tip. And there is Keith Price coming in to make a key interception. And Rutgers, once again, because of the defense, gets the ball deep in Navy territory. Scarlet Knights take over the 32-yard line, and Ray Lucas hands off to Craig Mitter, and Mitter with a strong run inside down to the 23-yard line. I mean, you know, we talked about the Rutgers offense for the first half. Ray Lucas at quarterback has scored on 7 of 11 possessions when he's at center. That's because of his natural ability, his ability to, to improvise, and that comes from his speed most of the time. But he's done that today. He's gotten away from the pressure in the first half by getting on the corner and delivering the football. But here, he's trying to get the running game going by getting the ball deep to, uh, to Mitter and getting some yardage. Rutgers has a great opportunity here to put this game almost out of reach. Here's Mitter. Stop to the line of scrimmage. The tackle by Bob Kaberski, the senior from Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. Kaberski comes into this game. We haven't called his name much, but he came comes into this game with an outstanding ball game against BC, uh, BC a week ago. He had 10 solo tackles. He's a big one at 6'4", 281. Let's go down on the sidelines. Mike Mayock standing by. Mike? Talking about stepping in and doing a job. Rutgers has had two interceptions today. One by Sean Smith stepping in at safety, and the other by number 45, Keith Price, doing a great job stepping in. Back up in the booth. Third down, three yards as Lucas rolls right. as a lot of real estate in front of him, and he'll carry the ball for the first down to the 20-yard line. Chris Beck, the linebacker, made the stop, but Ray Lucas moves the chains and the Scarlet Knights. But again, we talk about it, his ability to get on the corner, his speed. And that time he made the right choice, and he picked up the first down without throwing the football. Very impressive. This redshirt freshman from Harrison, New Jersey, as we look at uh, Brian Forte, who started this game for Rutgers, came out early in the first quarter. With a running back. Flag flies as Mitter. Gets down to the 12-yard line. 
Chad Chatlos and Michael Riggins, number 42, making the stop. It's going to go against Rutgers, holding. There's another one of the mistakes that Doug Graver talked about as he left the field at the end of the first half. Yes, sir. Very, very disappointed with the play of his offensive line. Said it publicly as he went off at halftime. And these kind of penalties hurt. And that time they caught him, they had a drive going. Pushed the ball back to the 30-yard line. And again, you're looking for some consistency here as you look over at the defensive side of uh, the Navy bench. Defensive coordinator Greg McMacken, who came into this program and from Utah. Come up with an entirely new defensive scheme for the midshipmen. Lucas keeps, throws, complete. Far sidelines, it was Jim Garantano. Garantano on a comeback pattern, beautifully executed. Lucas rolls away from the pressure, comes back, sets up, and Garantano comes back to the football on the sideline. Didn't pick up a first down, but picked up a lot of the yardage they lost in the penalty. And now Ray Lucas is looking at about a second and eight. Chris Brantley split to the right, Garantano to the left. It's Ray Lucas brings him out of the huddle. Bitter and Dorsey, the running backs, and here's Bitter. Grover favors the sophomore from Atlanta, number 48, makes the play. He's playing behind Andy Person at the left defensive end. Good job on the corner. They, they would not permit Bitter to get outside and turn it up inside. He was forced to make the cut soon. And as you called favors his name, coming back from the, from the defensive end position, he just closed down and made the tackle. Uh, again, the Navy defense has done a good job today. They've played tough. They've been very quick. They've executed well, beating blocks, getting penetration. And right now, the question is, can they hold up against Ray Lucas when it comes to the pass? Dorsey goes out. Avina is in. And here's Ray Lucas on the draw. Lucas. We wait for the call. He's down on the one-yard line. So Ray Lucas took it down, ran the, the draw on second or third and eight rather and was about a half a yard away Bob, from good the call good call Pat you read the draw right away this is a setup again from uh, sitting in the deep position here out of the shotgun draw play he waits this time and gives the right side of his line Kavulich and Vaughn a chance to make the blocks for him and then he goes for that goal line and comes very close to making it ball sitting on the half yard line first and goal to go very close in fact is trying to avoid the three tacklers. Here's first down, movement on the left side, and there are the flags. Left side of the line. Again, There's some movement. Could have been the quarterback that time because he got up on the ball and rushed it quickly. They may not have start on the offense. That's going to push him back a little bit. But this is what makes the whole dimension of Ray Lucas and his ability to run creates all sorts of problems for a defensive football team. And you're seeing it today as he gets a chance again. Uh, to play a lot, and this is the first time he's played a lot since the Colgate game. Ray Lucas, three carries for 21 yards, 17 on that last draw play. Now Lance Avina, a possession type receiver from Berwick, Pennsylvania, is into the ball game along with Garantano and Brantley. And as TK Dorsey goes out. Double receivers to the left, Mitter, the lone running back. They hand off to Craig Mitter, who goes into the end zone untouched for the Rutgers touchdown. Tailback, Craig Great Mitter. call. Spread the field and run that ball up inside off the right side behind Owens at right guard and Vaughn at right tackle. Big play. Mitter gets in for a score. They travel not too far to come down here, but they've been happy so far, especially in the last... Uh, three or four minutes of the second quarter, and now early in the third quarter as we watch Bitter cut back against the grain and make a score. What we're starting to see here, Pat, is too much defense for Navy. They've been on the field a little too long now. Rutgers starting to wear them down. Greg Bitter, the six-yard touchdown. John Benestad. The extra point is good. So with 10-29 left in the third quarter, Rutgers leading on Doug Graber's birthday, 24 nothing. We'll be right back. If you depend on the New Jersey Channel for programs like this, we want to hear from you. Take a moment now and support NJN with a contribution of $36, $50, or $100.
Call 1-609-530-5034 or mail your check to NJN CN 777 Trenton. What's good about it is it's doing the job that you hope television would do and doesn't do, which is to bring that diversity of viewpoint and of issues to a public uh, which is otherwise going to see 25,000 versions of Leave it to Beaver. You're watching NJN, the New Jersey Channel. WNJB, New Brunswick. We're back in Annapolis. Navy and Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Pat Scanlon along with Bob Cassiola and Mike Mayock. Scarlet Knights opening up a 24-0 lead. And Brian Forte, who began the game and struggled, replaced by Ray Lucas, who has now scored on 8 of 12 possessions. A Scarlet Knight quarterback. And you might expect that Brian Forte may get a look at quarterback. Rutgers opening up a 24 0 lead. Well, I don't think there's any question he's going to get back in the game. That's their way they're going to approach the game. They got two quarterbacks. As the season progresses, you're going to see more and more a splitting of those duties. Fielded on the five by Edwards. And Edwards does not get back to the 20 yard line. Taken down at the 18. Tackled by Lance Avina. And number 21. Keith Price. Here's the Rutgers scoring summary. Seven plays, 32 yards. It took just under four minutes. Craig Mitter, untouched for the six-yard score. That's where we stand at 24-0. Sione will come back in at quarterback. This time they'll operate from the I formation with Michael Jefferson split to the left. Tom Pritchard to the top of the screen. The handoff to Edwards. Tough running inside. Jamil Jackson, number 41, out of Elizabeth High School. And now Navy just trying to establish something, trying to get some offense going. Sioni at quarterback, second series for him. Uh, tough situation to be in, trailing 24 to nothing. Rutgers defense now dictating. George Chomp just trying to get a score on the board, and you know it's been hard for them to score this year. They have not scored. And there are two opening games, and here we are into the third quarter. Eight quarters of scoreless football as Steve Sioni calls timeout. Timeout, Navy. Sioni comes over to huddle. We talked about George Chomp and his background, and he's been in programs where he's had to rebuild. One of them, of course, was when he went to Marshall and took them uh, back to where they became a very outstanding football team as he's trying to build a confidence here of a senior quarterback. He comes into this game, as you reported, losing his two first and second string quarterback in the first two games of the season. So improvising is part of the word. But George Chomp has built it at Marshall, and before he came here, he had a 33 and 16 record at Marshall. He came in here knowing he had to rebuild his program, and as we mentioned earlier, he's going with younger personnel. Got a very good uh, freshman and sophomore class. That's what he's building the future on. But today, it's been a tough go because the Rutgers defense has come up, and now the offense gets an early score in the third quarter, and all he can do is hope to hang on. Okay, second down, eight yards. Rutgers leading 24-0. Sione rolls right. Look out. Here comes George Stewart. Sean Smith went over the back, attempting the interception, and it's a clean pass broken up by Sean Smith. What an acrobatic play for the six-foot junior. And he's playing with confidence, and he should be. He's, uh, he's a very good athlete, as we know. He's played a lot in the secondary when they go to a nickel or a dime defense. So it's nothing new for Sean Smith, the junior from Oakland, New Jersey, to line up at the free safety position. As uh, Sione comes out here to pull back, he's getting tremendous backside pressure, and he just throws the ball up for grabs. And really, uh, it's a close call, but I think Sean Smith was going for the football, and it was poorly thrown behind him, and that's the way the official read it. Third and seven. Sione in the left flat. Incomplete. It was intended for Jimmy Screen, the junior from Boca Raton. And Sione will go three and out. Now Jim Garantano will fill Marshall Roberts' duties on the punt return. Rutgers with Navy, Brian 
Schrum, a freshman, in to handle the punting duties. Rutgers puts pressure on. Looking for a victory. Leading Navy 24-0. Still plenty of time left in the second half. And Ray Lucas remains at quarterback. Out in the flat to Lance Avina. Avina across the 45 and wrapped up there. Lance Avina, a junior from Berwick, Pennsylvania. Had 32 touchdowns in his high school career, and he's knocked out of bounds by Joe Speed. What's great about Lance Avina, he plays when you ask him to play, and he's always giving you 100%. He's on the kickoff, especially teams. You call his name on a tackle, and that's the kind of attitude you need. Avina that time just taking a quick screen from Ray Lucas, getting upfield, picking up uh, almost nine yards. Second and inches. Mitter and Dorsey, the running backs. Here's Mitter behind the blocking of T.K. Dorsey, and he's not going to get there on this down. Stopped by Chez Snyder, number 78, the senior from Arlington, Texas. Very interesting. T.K. Dorsey seeing more action today, usually lining up in the, in the wing back or slot position. They like to utilize his blocking ability. We know, however, that he is a good receiver, so we may see the ball coming to him a little bit on. But T.K. Dorsey, number two, the senior out of Somerset, New Jersey, getting action today. Played at Immaculata High School. Third and one. Lucas, that may have been a busted play because it looked like Ray Lucas wanted to, to hand off or pitch the ball. Chaplos and Snyder drive him out of bounds. Let's take another look at that. Yeah, it's a bad play, actually. They had good field position. He just comes out on a sprint out, but it doesn't, whether he was trying to get the ball to Mitter or eventually throw the football, he never had a chance to turn around. Navy pushed him out of bounds, and they're going to get the ball back by forcing a punt here. David Lippitz has punt, punted once today for 39 yards. He's changing up their formation. Mark Washington is over. Lippitz gets it away. Good by Jefferson. And Jefferson quickly steps out of bounds. Anthony Cawthon there to make the play for the Rutgers special teams. Well, we have a chance. Let's check in with Mike Mayock. Patrick, thank you very much. I'm standing here with Billy Goats, number 26, number 27, and their keepers here. And fellas, <laughs> if Billy could talk, what would he say about this Navy offense? Well, he'd say it's uh... <laughs> very good. How about number 27? What would he say? Uh, I'd say about the same thing. Back up to you guys. Your tax dollars at work. <laughs> All right, Mike. One of the high moments of Mike Mayock's career, that interview. There's a completion to the tight end, Kevin Hickman, from Cherry Hill. Hickman played his high school ball at Holy Cross for Greg Lazinski, the bull. He's got the size. He's 6'4", 244. He had three receptions last week. Excuse me, three receptions for 31 yards against Virginia in the opening game. And he's, in a, he's a good-looking athlete. Only a sophomore. That time, Sione got a chance to throw the ball, a little play action off a of first down, and he ran a slant pattern. So George Chomp gave him a chance to do something different on first down. Instead of running a football, he threw it, and that's the kind of success you're looking for. You, you need bits of success when you're in this situation to just keep your, your team together. Well, let's see. First down for the midshipmen, so a gain of 10. Sione to Kevin Hickman. Now... That has to help from a confidence standpoint. Nice Pitchard and Jefferson in here. Here's a battle. The Knights and Bill Go. There it is. First and ten. Let's put Jimmy's screen to the right. Tom Pritchard to the left out of the eye formation. Another slide this time to Pritchard. Tom Pritchard makes the catch. Good course. That time Pritchard was out split to the sideline. He just broke inside at the defender off his back shoulder, and that's a good delivery by Sioni. He's got a strong arm if he's given a chance to throw the ball. The call on him is he's waited a long time for his opportunity. He's a heady young man with a strong arm, just waiting for a chance. Well, he's got his chance today. 
was a good looking athlete. Pritchard's made some good catches today in traffic. 35 catches in 91, most ever by a freshman. Here's Edwards. Bob Edwards gets out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Louis Beto, the 57, the senior. Union City and Emerson High School there for the defense. Scott Knights leading 24 0, but we've still got seven minutes left in the third quarter. A lot of football to be played, and uh, Sione could uh, certainly help his cause by uh, directing a drive here. They're doing it very modestly. They're not throwing downfield, they're not opening it all up. They're looking for those five to ten yard receptions as Edwards tries the right side of the line and finds nowhere to go. Well, you're not going to make big plays against Rutgers. Rutgers defensively is not going to give you those kind of plays. Uh, they've got experience uh, along the front and linebacker positions. Sure, they're playing with some new faces in the secondary, but those new faces have played. So it's hard to get the big gainer unless there's a complete breakdown, as you look at George Chomp here, trying to give Sione the right play here. So you've got to go after it just this way. Nickel and dine him every once in a while and put it up with safe possession-type passes. Sione on second and eight. They go to a one-back set. Sione looking for the far side receiver. That's Michael Jefferson. And Jefferson tests Kelly Woodward, the substitute junior who came in Jefferson. off the injury by Marshall Roberts. Right, excuse me. Jefferson is a good receiver. He's got some speed. He had four of them for 50 yards coming into this game. He's not real big, 5'6", 165. This is a good delivery by Sione. Good concentration there. And a first down for Navy. So the midshipmen are in Rutgers territory. 46 yard line. Jimmy Screen split to the left. Richard to the right out of the I formation. And it's thrown behind Jimmy Screen, but he makes a nice play. Reaches back for the ball as he was losing his footing. And the junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, makes the play. Still short of the first down, however. His father was an outstanding player at LSU, Jimmy Screen. And he came up here to the Naval Academy, a junior. Big There's catch as you look at uh, Rich Rachel uh, calling those defensive signals from the Rutgers sideline. Rich Rachel, he had a rough week. Uh, he said he had to put together three different game plans, figuring for the uh, the eye formation, the wishbone, the option, uh, everything that Navy could have thrown at the Scarlet Knights. And uh, he was up this morning. He said, I ran at about 5.30, and ever since then, he, he's been pacing up and down. Still, Rich Rachel in the uh, Rutgers defense, pitching a shutout with under five minutes left here in the third quarter. We're in the four-down zone now for Navy. And I'm sure that uh, George Chomp is thinking he's, if he doesn't make it on his third and short, he's going to go for it. Give his club a chance to get on the scoreboard, which they haven't done it yet this fall. Hand off to Clavon Smith. And we'll wait for the measurement. I think he's, it's going to be very close. He didn't really ever get going. Rutgers defensively came in 89. Robert Stephen from his defensive uh, linebacker, outside linebacker position made the hit. This is going to be a close call. Here's a good look at Clavon Smith, the junior from Baldwin, Mississippi. When we talk about a national recruiting, Navy certainly does it, uh, representing uh, athletes representing all the states in the country. That question was asked to George Chomp at a press conference this week about recruiting for the, the academies, and he said, as we look at the measurement here, and it's going to be a little short. There it is. That's how far he's got to go. Another stripe on that ball, and he's going to make it. <laughs> but Chomp said that uh, he feels that there are plenty of people out there who are still interested in getting their education at the, at the military academies, and he is very positive about the future of recruiting at Navy, and uh, feels if he can just get a few more classes in here, they'll play. They'll be playing very well. And you look at the Navy schedule. It was ranked by one uh, magazine recently as the second most difficult schedule in the country as far as the football schedule goes. Here we go, fourth and one. Jefferson's put to the right, but they'll operate from the eye formation with Smith and Edwards. And it's Edwards. Burrows down low. Now is it? Todd Lane was there for Rutgers. Let's see if Lane was able to hold him up short of the first down. Remember, he only needed about six inches. Well, he's going to have to measure this again. He can't possibly call it. 
Todd Lane, the senior from Willingboro, cousin of former Eagle Carl Hairston. Big Daddy, they called Carl. First down. You got it. He gained a half a football on that. And that half a football put it over for him. Good job defensively, though, for Rutgers. You called out uh, Todd Lane's name. You look at Louis Vito. You called his name out. George Stewart, Jameel Jackson. They're all veterans. They're all seasoned players. They're all very good athletes. 14th first down of the day for the Naval Academy. <laughs> Sione pumps once. Incomplete intended for Tom Pritchard, and that's the first time we've seen Pritchard drop a ball today. Went right off his shoulder pad. And he was as open in that case as he's been all day, and he didn't handle that one. Good execution by Sione. He stayed in the pocket after coming out of the play fake here, and he was patient. There was pressure coming from the right side here. But watch him. He pumped. He waited. He waited, and he finally delivered the football, and it was right there for him. Richard separated from Rutgers defensive back Keith Price. A little bump thrown off his concentration just a bit. Tom Pritchard has caught at least one pass in 12 of maybe his last 14 games. Flags and whistles. As the play is whistled to a stop. Well, this call has to go, I think. I would think Dead ball. Ball start. On the offense. You've got it, Bob. Every once in a while, you get a new quarterback in the game. The cadence, just the, him rushing the situation may affect the player. Well, we talked about the schedule, Bob, as uh, Jeff Sagrin was talking about rating it very difficult. Up next, uh, the midshipman at North Carolina. Then Air Force, Delaware. They're still trying to overcome the history of Scott Bruner. Then they'll be back at the Meadowlands to take on Notre Dame, Tulane, Vanderbilt, Rice, and then the big one, Army Navy, to wrap up the season. Here's Jefferson, incomplete, nearly picked off. Great. There's Kelly Woodward. Yeah, Kelly Woodward coming up on the corner. Great pressure that time by by Rutgers defensively forced Sione to to force the football. And watch this as you see it here, as he drops back here, a little play fake to the tailback. But here's two people coming up on the outside. Excellent job by by Spitzer from the nose position to get up in his face and almost through the interception. Yeah, you think they're picking on uh, the fill-in Kelly Woodward? Sioni now four of nine for 38 yards and an interception. Third down as he drops back across the middle. Complete to the tight end Kevin Hickman. And Hickman lowers his shoulder and makes Todd Lane pay a price. Lane a little slow getting up. Well, he's a big one. We said in 6'4", 244. They bring him across the middle. Good coverage in the perimeter by Rutgers. Not going to give him the long one. They hit the tight end underneath. And as a good linebacker backer will, he'll keep the play in front of him. And there comes Vito up to make the hit along with Todd Lane. So it's fourth down, but Navy's going for it. Fourth down and six yards. Screen split to the right. Pritchard to the left. Sione will look for Pritchard. And it's broken up. Keith Price got a hand in. And so the Navy offense unable to convert the fourth down try. And Rutgers will take over on their own 32. 255 left here in the uh, third quarter. As Rutgers comes and they change quarterbacks with 255 left. Rich Rachel and assistant head coach Arnold Jeter there. Rachel has to be happy with his defense. And now it's Stan Parrish's where the offensive coordinator is Brian Forte. He's under center for the Scarlet Knights. Double receivers to the left. And off to Mitter. Greg Mitter. Spinning and slipping and falling, gets down to the 39-yard line. Tackled by Joe Speed. Yeah, but we haven't. Uh, I don't believe we've seen Bruce Presley here in the third quarter. We haven't, and it may be that the uh, the shoulder of the knee is acting up on him. But Mitter's carrying the the 
the bulk of the running, but that time a good job on the right side by Maurice Owens, who's in at right guard, and Kavulich at center. Kavulich moved to center because Travis Broadbent injured his knee in the first half. So Kavulich uh, playing center, Maurice Owens at right guard opened up a big hole and gave Mitter a chance to get seven yards. Here's T.K. Dorsey in motion. Forte off the play action fake. Picture perfect down the sidelines. It's complete to Jim Garantano, who waited there, and Forte delivered the ball on the outside. Excellent, beautiful pattern by Garantano, and you got to watch him because he just kept his feet in bounds, leaned over the over the uh, boundary line, and still made the catch and got the first down. Good delivery to the outside by Forte, and there is the concentration, the experience, which makes Garantano perhaps moving in on the greatest uh, receiver as far as receptions go in the history of uh, Rutgers football. He's got five catches today for 60 yards. Rutgers on the first down. Mitter fights his way out to the 50. Tackled by Bob Kaberski. Very important now for Brian Forte to get his execution down, build build on that and build on his confidence because everybody knows the talent he has it's just a matter of getting it all together and let's not forget that he's been out of football for a while and even though he's he can't use it as an excuse he just needs time under the gun and this is the perfect opportunity for him and he sure played well and played hard last week against Pitt and a big win in motion Forte it's a straight drop there it is reception number six for Jim Garantano who did a nice job to bring the ball down it was a little high and still managed to get one foot in bounds for the reception. What they did is they put Mitter in motion, and then by putting him in motion into the sideline, that spread the defense and gave Garantano a chance to come down the sidelines and find that seam and just stay on the sidelines. And a beautiful execution, good delivery by Brian Forte. He really, when he has time, the setup has a great arm. Garantano now with 125 catches in his career, too shy of Andrew Baker, who's in second place. Third to Tim O'Dell as they keep the ball on the ground. Chris Beck, Dave Shaw making the stops for the midshipmen. Don't forget, coming up at the conclusion of the third quarter, it's our NJN Extra Point. Stick around as we analyze the key plays in this third quarter. Last time we were preparing for a game, as Rutgers was getting ready to take on Colgate, they talked about Jim Garantano being in a funk after a, a tough uh, camp this fall, but, boy, he's out of it in a hurry. And there's the sack, Chad Chatlos. He's had a fumble recovery and a, an interception. I had the sack. And that'll excite the midshipman. He's been outstanding. He's a fine defensive football player. That time, as you watch here, Forte wants to go deep to Brantley, so he gives him a pump fake, but he doesn't have enough time to deliver it. And Chatlos, who's all over the field, and his alignments came from the backside and got him. And actually, as you look at the senior from Youngwood, Pennsylvania, Forte did well not to cough the ball up. Absolutely right. This will be a third down and 14. Facing Forte. And the flag flies. And that may have been too much time. Oh, I think when it comes from that far back, that's what it's going to be. Delay on the offense. Free Bobby Ward. So now, tack on five more and call it third and 19. here interesting call continues here in the fourth quarter leading 24 nothing Pat Scanlon Bob Cassiola and Mike Mayock shotgun formation with double receivers to the right for Forte Forte with a ton of room room to run Brian Forte picks up the first down and more inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line Wow, he had so much real estate in front of him. Well, he came with his three top receivers, Garantano, Brantley, and Avena spread the field. Caught Navy in a zone coverage. They just steered block here. Number 90 took himself out of the play. Kuberski and gave him a chance as he raised his arm up there to make him think he was going to deliver the ball. And 
tucked it under, knew where the sticks were, and got the first down. Big play for Brian Forte. Big play for Rutgers, but for him, personally, that was a big play. Rivers made the stop, now Rutgers. For the first down from the 17. Number one back set with Craig Mitter. Forte to Garantano at the five, inside the five to the four yard line. Tackled by Chris Hart and Joe Speed. Garantano has become Brian Forte's favorite receiver in the late stages of the third quarter and early fourth. And he should be. He's an outstanding receiver. Runs his patterns beautifully. That time he ran the slant pattern to the inside. Forte put the ball right on the money. Got it inside the five-yard line, and Rutgers knocking on the door for another score. Garantano out of Lodi High School, a sociology major. First and goal from the four. They pitch to Mitter. He's got two touchdowns already today, and he gets down to the two-yard line. Chad Chatlos making the play for the Middies. Just a sweep into the sideline with, with Mitter in the deep back position, trying to make, make the corner. But that guy right there who's played an outstanding game, and let's hope he's not injured because he's vital to this Navy defense. Chatlos made the hit to prevent him from getting into the end zone. Chad Chatlos, who's come up with an interception in Navy's last seven games, a senior from Youngwood, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at the hit. Watch in the corner, there's 33, and there is Chatlos coming right down at him. You see 26 right on the corner, perfect position, big play. Craig Mitter lowered the left shoulder. Mitter at 5'9", 203 pounds. Taking on Chatlos at 5'11", 189. Well, Chatlos is up. That's good to see. Hopefully he'll be back in a couple of plays. Meanwhile, Rutgers now with second and goal to go from the two-yard line. Number 90, Tim Pernetti, the junior tight end, is in for the Scarlet Knights. Marlon Green, number 17, will come in for Navy, replacing Chatlos at the anchor back. Bitter. Touchdown, Rutgers! Good job on the right side of the Rutgers offensive line, including Tim Pernetti, who turned out on the outside man in his offensive end position. The rest of the blocking was Scott Vaughn and Maurice Owens, and Bitter, Walston in the end zone. From the end zone, Craig Mitter's third touchdown of the day. And there's the block on the right side. And there's a great block by number two coming from his up back position. That's TK Dorsey putting a hit on the linebacker and they just walled everybody off. Perfect execution. He got a score. John Benestad. Under the hold of Garantano. It's up. It's good. So with 13.50 left in this one. To the band, the Scarlet Knights lead 31 to nothing. College football action returns to Giant Stadium this October. Catch Rutgers as they take on perennial top 10 powerhouse Penn State on October 3rd. The Scarlet Knights will also entertain the Cadets of Army on October 17th at Giant Stadium. Then the Irish of Notre Dame, led by Heisman candidate Rick Meyer, battled the midshipman of Navy on October 31st. For more information on all the big-time college football action at Giant Stadium, call 201-935-3900. Hi, I'm Mary Cummings. Hella Young is our guest on the next New Jersey Tonight. You know her as the hostess of the New Jersey State Lottery. She's presided over thousands of drawings, which have created hundreds of millionaire winners. But did you know that Hella, a former Miss New Jersey, is also an image consultant? She can talk about the look that's best for you, the makeup and clothing that can help you gain an edge in the workplace. Join Hella Young at 7.30 on the next New Jersey Tonight, only on NJN, the New Jersey Channel. We're back at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. Beautiful day for college football. And Rutgers giving head coach Doug Graber a reason to celebrate on his 48th birthday today. Tropical Storm Danielle is 
left us behind. The weather's been great. And remarkably, the field has held up. Uh, Pat, we had some concerns about it because there was so much rain here, particularly last night. The field has held up, it's dried out. The track's been pretty good for everybody. And a staff. And it's Michael Jefferson fielding it on the two. Jefferson to the 20. Out to the 22. And Rutgers, there's Lance Avina in on the play. Along with number 42, Chuck Mound. There's an exciting, enthusiastic looking <laughs> picture right there, huh? Just feed me. That's all he cares about. Look at that. That's right. He said the grass was fine here today. Don't worry about the turf. <laughs> Okay, Steve Sioni returns at quarterback. The senior out of Tampa, Florida. Trying to get a score for Navy. The first score, perhaps, of the season. No work from I formation. Sioni, look out. John Williams sacks him from behind. Just something you crave for as a defensive football player. Come from the blind side, nobody touches you, and they roll away and set up. And it was perfectly set up, and Williams knew right now he had a shot at it. Sioni never had a chance. Pump fake, and he's, again, fortunate to keep the football. And Jeff Williams, number 49, is in the backfield now for Navy. What a day for Sean Williams, when you think about it. He had the fumble return for a touchdown. Big sack. John Williams, one of the Butkus Award nominees. Sioni pumps once. Incomplete intended for Jimmy Screen. We talk about sacks. John Williams making his presence felt. And the Rutgers career sack leaders. Nick Torn with 52. Dino Manjuro, who we visited with at Colgate. And Sean Williams moving up the board now with 19 career sacks. Third down, 14 yards. Sioni looking downfield for Pritchard. And he overthrows Tom Pritchard, who was on a fly pattern. Atkins had coverage, and so did Kelly Woodward. Tough situation to be in for Steve Sioni. Tough situation for any a quarterback to be in. Trailing 31 nothing, knowing you got to put the ball up. And you're throwing it against a rather experienced defense and surely uh, a lot of pressure. So Navy, again, in search of that score, has to punt the football here. Back to Rutgers, and Rutgers should come up again with good field position. And Shrum on again to handle the duties. This is Garantano on the 42. Garantano. Curling to the left, gets out of bounds just that the 42. So a lot of a lot of running, but no yardage to speak of. Jim Hill able to run him down. Rutgers now going with Eddie Walker, number 11, at wide receiver. Brian Forte. Trying to mount another scoring drive for the Scarlet Knights. Well, a key thing today is Rutgers uh, started to come on here in the second half with their offense, both Lucas and now Forte at quarterback. Important for them now is to keep their composure, keep the intensity level up for the last uh, 12 minutes, and get ready for a big one next week. Forte has it tipped, maybe a live ball as it was thrown behind him, Andy Person made the play, but Rutgers is able to uh, grab it, but it is a uh, loose ball, and they'll place it back at the uh, 41. This is a little slip screen. He's trying to get it out to the wide flank of Brantley out there, but good good execution by 57 Pearson. He gets up and uh, just uh, extends himself and bats the ball away. Second and 10. Interesting set right here. Brantley in motion. Bill Bailey and Bruce Presley are the running backs. And this is Bruce Presley who breaks a tackle and fights 
makes his way down to the 49-yard line. Javier Zumawaga made the stop, and here's Bruce Presley. It's, we hadn't seen him in the third quarter. Yeah, he looks like he's upset because he hasn't been seen too much and hasn't had his hands on the football here in the second half, but he ran that time like he's going to go all the way for the score. He ran right over senior linebacker Chris Beck. He tried to make an inside-out tackle, and he picked up six yards. Presley came into this game averaging over five, almost 5.5 yards per rush. And you mentioned earlier that Rutgers leads the Big East with their rushing offense. Bitter averaging 5.7, Presley averaging 5.5. Forte off the straight drop looking for Brantley. There's Brantley complete at the 10-yard line. He beat Michael Riggins, number 42, and Brantley did a very nice thing downfield, Bob, and then he adjusted to the ball thrown by Forte. Absolutely, Riggins did not find the football until too late. The ball was right there and well thrown. Here you see it from the shotgun. Uh, Forte just sets up and shows he's got a touch as well as strength on that arm. There's the football, there's the adjustment by, and you're gonna see beautiful execution and just excellent concentration on the part of Brantley to bring that ball in because the hand of the defender, Riggins, was right in his face. A 41-yard reception for Chris Brantley. And now Forte wasn't ready for the snap as flags fly and whistles sound. And these are the things that concern you because as, as much as he, he executes, every once in a while we see this sort of lackluster or nonchalant uh, situation. There were seven guys on the line of scrimmage moving and the quarterback wasn't there. How do you explain that? And there's the frustration on the part of the head coach. And bear in mind, the Scarlet Knights can ill afford this type of a performance next week at Giant Stadium when they take on Penn State. Join us next Sunday morning. Rutgers and Penn State from Giant Stadium. Complete game coverage. They're on NJN, the New Jersey channel. Couple receivers to the right. But it's Presley up the middle. And Bruce Presley barrels into a Navy tackler, Chad Chatlos, and the referee in the middle of the field who took quite a pop. Presley's mad because he's blaming it on the official right now. He's saying, I would have scored if that official didn't get in my way. <laughs> But he is good. He is tough. There he is at 5'10", 205. The red shirt freshman at a Highland Park. If he stays healthy, he's going to be something. He's already something. He's just going to be better. <laughs> Ten carries for 46 yards as they split Walker and Henry to the right. Second down, Rutgers can pick up a first down on this drive. The first down, Marker to two. Chris Forte, incomplete pass. Chad Chatlos, who... The last series was helped off the field. Makes two plays in a row. Good call by the official. Forte's on. Moore's going forward. They brought Chatlos up on the on the backside here. On the top of your screen, you see a blitz coming from the safety man right there. But Chatlos comes free. Two people blitzing from the outside. Navy has nothing to lose. Gambling a 31-0 deficit. And Chatlos got there and forced, forced the incompletion. Chad Chatlos. 5'11", 189 pounds, a senior from Youngwood, Pennsylvania. Now, big play here for Rutgers, third and eight. Shotgun, Forte, delivers to Brantley. Is it? No, he's down inches from the goal line. I want to tell you, give credit to the Rutgers receivers. They have no fear. They run those slant patterns in the middle where they know they're going to take a lick. That time it was Brantley. And give credit to Forte, who was really hit on that pass, but had enough on it to get it in there. Watch this. Here comes the inside-out pressure again. He's going to get hit right there. There's the football. Brantley having good position on the defender, Chris Hart. Gets it to the one-foot line. Chris Hart is a soloist with the Naval Choir. Wrapped him up. Here's Presley trying to get to the end zone, and he can. Bob Kaberski, senior from Swarthmore, and Shane Halloran, number 54, there to make the play for the midshipman who had a goal line stand last weekend against Boston College. That's a big play. They just came up with nine men on the line of scrimmage, and Halloran, number 50, the inside linebacker, the sophomore, came in and hit Presley before he had a chance and actually threw him for a loss. So it'll be second and goal from the one-yard line. Presley and T.K. Dorsey, the running backs. And Rutgers 
may be guilty of a delay of game penalty as the I don't know clock runs that. down. Let's see what the uh, call it, is. It, from it could be anything here. It's called by the side official. It could be the tackle jumping off sides. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. And that's it. That's Ouch. the kind of thing. Now, here's where you get... Watch the left side of the screen. You're going to see the left tackle, number 60. It could be number 66, Donovan. We can't see that total picture. It is 66. That is Keith Donovan, the senior, who moved before the snap and pushed the ball back to the almost the seven-yard line. And again, the penalties is as much as impressive as a 31 to nothing score is. That's something that Doug Graver and his staff just cannot cannot accept. Seven penalties, 40 yards, especially against a real strong team that you can you can't win. Second and goal for the six, Forte. Incomplete. He was trying to hook up with Eddie Walker, but a flag flies. They may call that offensive interference because Walker, uh, Joe Speed, was the defender back there, number 13. Pass interference. No, he on the defense. Speed. That's a tough call. When you look at this, it seems to me the ball was underthrown and that number 13, Speed, was in position. And Walker ran right into him. Let's look at it real closely. It's going to be another slant pattern coming in from the outside. There's the ball being delivered. Tough to see. Tough to see, but uh, close call. So they even themselves up. They move the ball back now inside the five-yard line. It'll be half the distance. The ball sitting on the, on the two. There's Navy assistant coaches there. Relaying the defensive calls in. One guy was doing a kick, a wiggle. It was like a chorus down there on the sidelines. George chopped up. Deep in thought. This is Presley. Presley lowers the shoulder and gets down. Just about where this series began, about six inches from the goal line. Riggins and Zuluaga make the stops. Penalty, a big call because Rutgers now with three more cracks. Second and goal at this point. Here comes tight end Marco Bentaglia, number 81, into the ball game, replacing Bill Bailey. Rutgers going now with, uh, with three tight ends, actually. Three tight ends. They call this their jumbo formation. Three tight ends. TK Dorsey in the blocking back position. Presley stuffed by Kaberski. Shane Halloran also on the play, but Kaberski got him low. Halloran finished him up, up high. And this is what we are talking about earlier in the game, the penetration that the Navy defense is making and making big plays as you look at number 95, Stacy Yop, the other defensive tackle coming out of the game. But they've got penetration and never gave, out of a tight formation, which is hard to do, and never gave Rutgers uh, a chance, particularly the tailback Presley, a chance to vault the line. Big play defensively. And you got to give credit. Trailing 31 to nothing, they haven't let up a bit on defense. Third and goal. Forte will keep on the bootleg. Touchdown, Scarlet Knights. Brian Forte. That's a good call from the sideline. Everybody packed in looking for the tailback, going up inside, Forte coming off the bootleg and getting enough on it to get in the corner of the end zone inside the pylon. Here's the execution. Play fake deep to Presley as he comes out with it to the left side is a naked bootleg all the way, and he just gets inside before Chatlos puts the hit on him. What an effort by Chatlos. What an effort by Forte. Well, he... Players were excited, so were some of the assistant coaches, but Doug Graber, you get the feeling he's thinking about those penalties. It's Benistat. This is the point after try, so John Benistat had been perfect this season. His first miss of the year, but Rutgers still leading the midshipman of Navy. 37 to nothing, with 7.32 left to play in the fourth quarter. Corporate support for NJN, the New Jersey Channel, and programs like this comes from the following New Jersey businesses. Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Bell, Perk Selenese, ADP, and Beckton Dickinson. 
If you would like to support your public television station, call 1-609-530-5321 or write NJN at CN777, Trenton, New Jersey, for more information. You're watching NJN, the New Jersey channel. WNJB, New Brunswick. John Benestad attempting the kickoff for the Scarlet Knights. The lead 37-0. Seven and a half minutes left in this one. Fielded in bobble. Down around the 11. Now regained. Number 28. The up man, Kevin Smart, the defensive back. The return, and now a flag flies late on the sideline. So we'll see what develops there. Ahead for Rutgers. It gets tough. Penn State, Syracuse, Army, and then Virginia Tech on homecoming. Cincinnati as the Rutgers goes back on the road. West Virginia, and then at Temple. Well, following this Navy game, they got two weeks back to back that are very key games for their program. Because a win in either one or both of those could project them right into the national spotlight. And they know that. So they've got to regroup a little bit. It's been impressive at times, particularly defensively. They've played well today. Their special teams, again, consistent. But offensively, even though individual efforts by the Craig Mitters of the world and the, uh, the Lucases at quarterback and recently by Brian Forte, there's still something missing there. Too many penalties. And this is what they've really got to shore up as they go into this, this next week in their practice in preparation for Penn State. Steve Sioni has gone all the way at quarterback here in the second half as Casey Van Meter suffering a hip injury. Here's Sioni. Complete to Michael Jefferson. The unsportsmanlike conduct penalty had Mac Navy up. They get a bunch of it back. Let's go down to Mike Mayock. Thanks very much, Patrick. I'm standing in front of a group of very, very frustrated midshipmen here. You see the gentlemen behind me are the guys that run out in the field every time that Navy scores and do push-ups for as many points as are on the board. Well, as we all know, Navy hasn't scored a point yet this season, and these guys are a little bit frustrated, and yes, they're losing weight. Back up to you guys. <laughs> There's the story. Sioni with plenty of time downfield intended for Tom Pritchard. Pritchard wanted a defensive call on Keith Price, but he won't get it this time. Tom Pritchard, the sophomore from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Another one of the reasons that George Chomp is very excited about his freshman and sophomore class. Last year, he made 35 catches, most ever by a freshman at the Naval Academy. Starting to get some substitutions on defense for the Rutgers now. Spells is in at one of the defensive end positions for uh, Sean Williams. Third down. Oh, oh, there he is. Intercepted. We called it, Bob. Shane Spells picks off Steve Sioni's pass. <laughs> Will <laughs> inherit great field position, and there's a injury on the play. And it could be their quarterback. It's, it's Sione. He got hit as he delivered the football. That time, Spells is in at the, the outside uh, linebacker position as he drops off into his pass coverage. All of a sudden, he looks up as you see here. There's Sione making the play, and there's the hit that's coming into him a little bit late. There's the pass, and here comes Spells in the right position. Playing the coverage and looking upfield, and the junior from New Brunswick gets that ball back inside the 10 yard line. Rutgers knocking on the door for another score. Well, he tucked it away, and it may have been that Steve Sioni was injured trying to make the tackle. Here's the handoff to Antoine Moore, and Moore goes nowhere. Well, Brian Ellis was injured that way last week as he attempted to make a tackle on an interception. Broken jaw, and here's Derek McCord, the senior and the quarterback for the Scarlet Knights. McCord, who saw a lot of action last year, decided to come back for the Scarlet Knights. 
Well, McCord, yeah, as we look at Sione, it looks like he might have get hit in the ribs after he delivered the football. McCord, of course, is a big kid, 6'3", 225, out of Huntington Station, uh, Long Island. And he's a lefty, he's got a very strong arm, and uh, Doug Graver's been very complimentary about his attitude under these circumstances. Pitch to Moore, Moore cuts it across the 10, down to the six yard line. Bob Kaberski makes the play, but Antoine Moore turned on the Jets. And the senior from Hempstead, New York, taking advantage of the playing time. Well, he played a lot. He played very, uh, played a very important role a year ago when they had injuries. And as Doug uh, Graber said earlier this week, hey, we've got guys here like Antoine Moore and Bill Bailey who we're not afraid to put in in any situation. They've got experience and they're proven players. And Moore's attitude, of course, is another plus. Come to his senior year and be able to play spot duty and contribute in some way. But he's got a chance, hopefully, to get into the end zone. Third and seven. Cord rolls left. Looking for Avina, a little high. Lance Avina can't make the play. Michael Riggins was there for the coverage. Now, Rutgers will send on the field goal unit. John Benestad will come on. Derek McCord there. Joining Ray Lucas on the sidelines. The grassy area behind the uh, goal post. Kind of a nice place to sit out and watch the game here at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Twenty-six yard attempt by Benestad. It's up. Cruz. Getting a win as it looks now to Penn State. Week at the metal line. Here's Jefferson on the three. Out to the 20, across the 20, to the 21 yard line. Chuck Mound, number 42, caught the 94. There to make the stop. And now there is quarterback Tony Soliday. So Navy has now lost four players who've played quarterback this season. Holiday is a senior, a sophomore, out of Mission Vallejo, California, at 5'11", 184 pounds. He's never taken a snap in a varsity game. Here it is. Well, he does it, and it's a handoff to Jeff Williams. Well, Navy's lost Jim Kubiak with a dislocated shoulder against Virginia. Brian Ellis with a broken jaw against Boston College. Jason Van Meter began the day today, suffered a hip injury. Steve Sione was injured on the last play, either after he delivered the ball or trying to make this tackle on the interception. And now it is Soliday's turn at uh, quarterback for the midshipman. Gain of five by Jeff Williams. Here's Williams again, trying the left side. He darts between a couple of tacklers. It is very close to a first down. Williams at 5'5", 170 pounds, comes out of Coburn, Virginia. Getting a chance to play because there's been injuries to the entire tailback position. Van Mater, who was the starting tailback, went to quarterback today, is hurt. Billy James was lost early in the first quarter. Rob Edwards, another sophomore, has been in there, and now it's Jeff Williams at tailback. And off to Williams. He tries the right side. Tackled by 23, Mark Washington. While we have a chance, let's remind you, each Thursday, I invite you to join me for Sports World here on NJN. Live from 8 to 9 o'clock. Take your phone calls. This week, we'll talk with Doug Graver in the first half hour. And then, Jerry Eisenberg of the Newark Star Ledger joins us for the second half as we talk about one of Jerry's pet projects, the Pride Bowl, coming up. Second and six. Solid day. Complete to Pritchard. Pritchard gets across the 50-yard line. Ball was loose for a moment. Rutgers recovers. Oh boy, this coaching staff upset on the Navy side. They've got themselves going with a with a uh, some kind of a drive. A new quarterback, Solid Day, makes a big pass. They fumble it up, and look at them. They're really upset. The official saw it a different way, and George Chomp just scratches his head. And he says, I can't believe this has happened to us. But it is. Rutgers gets the football back, and a whole slew of substitutes coming in for Rutgers, getting a chance to play now. Well, Kelly Woodward, the 
junior from Columbia, Maryland, caps his homecoming with a fumble recovery. And now Derek McCord will continue at quarterback. Fresh white uniforms out there, Bob. He hands off and Rutgers. Julius Blackwell, number 25, operating from the fullback position, the junior from Jackson, New Jersey. It was all short, scored 27 touchdowns in Jackson. 247 left. Midshipman just that far away from being shut out for a third straight game. And it doesn't get easier for him as you look back and look down the road and look at their schedule. Second and three, McCord pitching to Antoine Moore. Moore loses his footing. Down around the 41-yard line. Eric McGowan, the co-captain, makes the stop. And there's Ray Lucas. What a touch he has had. The Midas touch for the Scarlet Knight offense. He's got a Midas touch as an athlete, and I think he's got an emotional lift when he comes into the game for the people around him. But he did it today, and he did it with his own running and his ability to get away from the rush, which gave him a chance to put some pressure on the corner and deliver the football. And uh, got him some points in the third quarter that made this really a route early on. This was 10 of 13 for 141 yards. Here's Julius Blackwell, first down, Scarlet Knights. Ty Rennick, a junior from Sarasota, making the play, but... Blackwell, the junior, had 17 straight 100-yard games in high school. He's got a bunch of people to compete with right now in that running back position. He knows it, but here's a chance from the play, get some uh, game conditions, and take a few hits and gain some yardage. So it's very important for this entire team to have this opportunity to play late in the ball game. Rutgers picking up the first down. Chip Mounds put to the left. Here's the man of the moment, Julius Blackwell. Down to the 30-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines to Mike Mayock. Thank you, Patrick. I don't think it's too early at this point to start talking a little bit about Penn State, uh, especially as I'm standing within, within about 10 yards of Marshall Roberts. And he's in street clothes uh, with crutches. And I think he's a key to next week's Penn State game. Without Marshall Roberts as a cover guy on O.J. McDuffie and also as a punt returner, I'm a little bit concerned about it. I think that, that's an excellent point, Mike, and I think it's something we have to handle. They have to handle, and Roberts has to get back. He, he, he not only brings all those qualities as a player, but his leadership and his confidence back there is essential to this club. He's critical. Here's Moore around the left side. Antoine Moore dragged down at the 25-yard line. Stopped by Mark McGinnis, and yes, that's a, a tough scene. As Marshall Roberts with the left ankle injury today. Now let's look at that carefully. It may not be as serious as it looks there. You hope it isn't. It may be that they put him on crutches to get the weight off the ankle. More importantly, they probably iced him too. So all of those things go into quick treatment and hope that maybe they can get him ready to play this weekend. Clock running. Final moments of this one. Well, Doug Graver will improve on the road with his second victory. He improves to Two and 11. George Chomp is looking at 0 and 3, a third straight shutout as this one comes to an end at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Doug Graber, the Scarlet Knights, improved to 3 and 1 with wins this year over Colgate, Pittsburgh, and the Naval Academy. The only blemish, that opening day loss at Boston College. So the Scarlet Knights defeat the midshipmen of Navy 40 to nothing. And we'll be back to wrap it all up in our postgame right after this.